Korea, China, Hong Kong and Singapore tumbled today. The market in Japan is closed for a public holiday. The Shanghai Composite slipped about 0.7%. The Shenzhen Composite declined 0.73%. In South Korea, the Kospi declined about 11.05 points as some of the tech names struggled. Hong Kong's Hansen Index was down 1.57%. Australia's benchmark ASS200 reversed early gains to finish near flat as the energy sector declined 0.77%. And U.S. stock index futures were lower today on the back of ongoing concerns over an economic slowdown in China as well as the longest government shutdown in U.S. history. At around 5.24 a.m. Eastern Time, Dow futures fell 215 points, indicating a negative open of 233.95 points. Futures on the S&P and Nasdaq were also down. The moves in pre-market trade come after fresh data out on Monday showed December exports and imports dropping unexpectedly in China. These figures deepened concerns of a slowdown in the world's second largest economy. Furthermore, the divisions between Democrats and Republicans over a border wall continue, meaning there is no end in sight for the reopening of the U.S. government. The latest earnings season is starting today, with Citigroup set to update investors before the bell. On the data front, there are no significant releases to note away from the equities markets and back here in Africa. The eight countries of the West African CFA franc zone plan to issue 2.723 trillion CFA francs. That's about $4.82 billion in debt in 2019 compared to 2.433 trillion CFA francs in 2018. The total for 2018 was less than the 3.007 trillion CFA francs originally forecast, mostly because of lower than expected debt issuance by Ivory Coast and Mali. The eight nation economic and monetary union of West Africa comprises Benin, Burkina Faso, Ivory Coast, Mali, Guinea Bissau, Senegal. Niger and Togo. They share a regional central bank, the BCAO, and the CFA franc currency, which is pegged to the euro. And Zimbabwe plans to introduce a new currency in the next 12 months as a shortage of US dollars has plunged the financial system into disarray and forced businesses to close. In the past two months, the southern African nation has suffered acute shortages of imported goods, including fuel, whose price was increased by 150% on Saturday. Zimbabwe abandoned its own currency in 2009 after it was wrecked by hyperinflation and adopted the greenback and other currencies such as sterling and the South African rand. But there is not enough hard currency in the country to back up the $10 billion of electronic funds trapped in local bank accounts, prompting demands from businesses and civil servants for cash which can be deposited and used to make payments. In the meantime, protests have erupted across some cities in Zimbabwe. This follows the weekend announcement for a fuel price increase. Labour leaders sent out flyers asking for a peaceful protest devoid of looting to send a message to government that they have had enough. President Emerson Mangagwa announced the new fuel prices at the weekend as fuel shortages and economic challenges bite harder. Sunday brought small pain for Zimbabweans. Diesel is now $3.11 a litre, up from $1.38, while petrol is now $3.31, up from $1.43 a litre. President Emerson Nangagwa came bearing the bad news himself, complete with reasons. These prices are predicated on the ruling official exchange rate of 1 to 1 between the bond note and the United States dollar. And also on the need to keep fuel retailers viable. Guests of the government, like diplomats and tourists with adequate proof of status, will be paying less at $1.24 for diesel and $2.32 for petrol. This past week, the industrial sector had sent out an SOS to government. Cognizant of the need to prevent generalized price increases for goods and services in the country, with the attendant hardships which that will entail, especially to the commuting workers, the government has decided to grant a rebate to all registered business entities in the manufacturing sector, mining sector, commerce sector, agriculture sector, 
and transport sector. Details of the promised rebate will be revealed at a later date. Meanwhile, at the pumps and to the man on the street, it's a very difficult life. Long fuel queues remain and the pumps are off. Even the black market is quiet. The statement sort of uh, brings the price of fuel closer to the market price and it removes the, uh, the subsidy. So I was actually expecting to find fuel easily to pay because of that. you see, it's still the same thing. We're still queuing up and there's, there's nothing at the pump. It will definitely affect everything because with the increase of the price of fuel, it means every retailer, every business will increase whatever they are producing. Because, you know, they need to use their transport, they need to use cars in order to bring in the goods. Today we have to trek. We walked about three kilometers to get transport to come to work. And I ended up getting to work late. The labor leaders are taking their expression of displeasure much further with a three-day shutdown. Protests have erupted in Bulawayo and Harare on Monday morning. We are now calling for a three-day stay away, Monday, Tuesday, th Wednesday, then for meet on a Thursday and look at other forms of action, including demonstrations, including sitting in cities and in government places. And we make a, me a clear message to the government that we are overburdened. We can't carry this anymore. It's nearly midway through the first year of this administration, and it's recorded a series of strikes, protests alongside the monetary crisis and fuel shortages. A number of corrective policies, including a likely new currency, are said to be in the works. Hopefully, the president's promise of a brighter tomorrow will be a reality. From Johannesburg, South Africa, Betty Dibia, Channels Television News. And after the break, we cross over to the Nigerian equities market for today's market update. Just stay with us.